When I was 18, I immigrated from the US to Italy to pursue a degree in economics. We all know how idealistic young people can be and that this idealism pushes them to do crazy things. In my case, there was no difference, and let's just say that when an idea got into my mind, there was really no turning back from it. When I would tell people that I was thinking of moving to Italy, they would often point out the obvious. I didn't speak Italian at the time, I had no real connection to Italy, and Italy is a difficult country with difficult conditions where especially young women of color are at a bit of a disadvantage in society. But 18-year-old Tia didn't care, and she could only see the opportunity embedded in the challenges. She said that while all of that was true, what she could get out of the situation was more than that. She said that in the worst case scenario, she would pick up a new language, learn about a new culture, get a degree that she could actually afford, and could go back home to her old life anytime she wanted to. What was so difficult about that? Where was the problem? So Tia jumped into the deep end straight out of high school. And what happened next was a whirlwind. And spoiler alert, it was very difficult. Uh, that said, there were definitely tears and frustration, bureaucracy and immigration, relationships that didn't work out in multiple moments where she thought of giving up. But she didn't and things gradually got easier. It seems like a lifetime ago, but that Tia was me. The experience was so disorienting and changed Tia so irreversibly that oftentimes when I look back, I can't believe that she was me. In 2017, I graduated and I started working for companies that I could only dream of working for, doing things that I never imagined were possible. And through sharing my story, I amassed a following of hundreds of thousands of people through whom I started to have an impact. People started calling me a success. But when I look back, my success isn't just up to me and my hard-headed idealisticness. Actually, my success story is a story of community and how it can change the path of a person to have a wider resonance. It's a story of how I am who I am because of who we all are. It is a story of Ubuntu, and here's what I learned. First, I learned that every problem is actually an opportunity. There are so many problems in the world. Actually, it can feel overwhelming how many problems there are. There are the politicians, and the bureaucracy, and the rising cost of living, and the racists, and the sexists, and the fact that the planet is being set on fire with all of us in it. It can be overwhelming, and it can be depressing. <laughs> but I like to think, even because if I didn't think this way, I'd go crazy, that every problem is an opportunity. An opportunity to make someone's day, or even life, better. And that, that opportunity can be transformed into a product or a service or a movement that is waiting to have an impact. Okay, so we've identified a few problems that can possibly be opportunities. Now what? Now we have to move the masses. And to do this, you need to create a community. This brings me to the next thing that I learned. It's that there's power in knowing who you're talking to and how you should be talking to them. And this power will help you create a community that can help you reach your objectives. You've probably heard that you have to know your public, but what does that even mean? It means that you have to create a relationship. And as with all relationships, these relationships take time to foster and rely on mutual understanding in order to be effective. I learned this through my social media activities. It all started with that first YouTube video I decided to put myself out there, and I offered a piece of myself to share with the world. And then, someone responded. There was a comment. I responded back, and after that, I uploaded another video. I put more of myself out there. 
That comment became many comments, and over time, the people that were making the comments started to keep coming back. The more I put myself out there, the more they would share their stories with me. And over the years, a sort of relationship would form. And through this relationship, I began to learn about the needs and the wants of my public. And I also learned about the things that they didn't need and that they didn't want. It seems banal, but this is the basis of communication. And communication reinforces relationships. When we focus these relationships around a goal, this is community. So now you've made a community. But we have to go back to our initial problem, and how do we solve it? Well, I can assure you that numbers really are power. So next, what you need to do is mobilize yourself and your communities. You took the time to create a community, and you took the time to foster a relationship with them. So they're all ears with regards to what you have to say. It's the perfect moment to tell them about those crazy ideas you have, about fixing those problems. And you'd be surprised how many of them would be willing to help you bring your ideas to fruition. I'll give you some practical examples. It was 2020, and half of my income disappeared overnight. I was working two jobs when the pandemic hit, and all of a sudden, I went from being OK financially to complete instability. No one knew what was going to happen next. And as a society, we were all at a standstill. The timing was also less than perfect, because I had just bought a house. And suddenly, I had no idea when or how I was even going to be able to pay for it. So I must say, though, when you become a person that sees opportunity in the problems that are in front of you, things tend to work themselves out. It had been a while that on social media, I wanted to enter into a topic that I was really interested in and I wanted other people to be interested in too. Personal finance. <laughs> I always thought, we live in a society that it is capitalistic and yet most people aren't given the skills to maneuver and survive it successfully. As a black woman that studied economics, I, viv I lived this experience firsthand. And so I wanted to change that. I wanted the people like me, especially the young people and the women and the communities of color to be empowered economically. I wanted them to understand that it wasn't this distant topic that had nothing to do with them. And so that's how a woman who counts money was born. Tens of thousands of views and a book deal later, I can say that it almost feels like the word money in Italy doesn't sound so dirty anymore. I lost count of how many people tell me that my series inspired them to start a budget or open a pension plan or start investing regardless of their background. I also had people tell me that it was powerful to see a black woman's face in the economic section of Italy's biggest bookstore. That is change. And it was brought about in a community effort. I had a problem that I thought my community had too. I pooled our ideas and I created a space where we could all benefit from and act on the information together. But maybe the change that I'm most proud of is that of another example. I discovered, shamefully late, that there's actually a whole community in Italy that is just like me. Their parents had them after they decided to move to Italy from other places. They are people that were born and raised in Italy with non-Italian origins. But I didn't not see them on purpose. I didn't see them because they are largely left out of many parts of Italian society, most notably the media. But just because you don't see something doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. And so when I realized, <laughs> when I saw, it was like I was seeing a whole new world and a whole new Italy. And that's when the wheels in my head started turning again. I saw a problem. There was a disconnect between the wider Italian society and the minorities that also played a role in it. Furthermore, these people didn't have control over their own narrative, and so the problems were just compounded. Once I realized the problems, I immediately took again to trying to address the issues. I used the, the community and the platform that I had already formed to address them. There we have it, another opportunity. And so, that is how I found an online platform that is a space that is made to inspire all of us to learn while simultaneously unlearning our biases. It is a space to grow together so that we can see a 
wider and better representation of Italian culture in color. It's a place that allows us to be a part of an ever increasingly inclusive society. This platform is Ubuntu in real life. It exists because we all do. I wanted to do anything, really, <laughs> to not only help my friends who are still suffering under an unjust system, but also play my role in creating an Italy that my future kids can feel a part of and see themselves represented in. And in fact, a year on, we're, we're 27,000 strong. And that means 27,000 people who no longer have to doubt whether these people exist or whether they deserve to see themselves represented. I'm really proud of it. It's not an easy journey, but I do feel that something is moving and that we are just one piece of a wider puzzle. So, my story, isn't a my story is a success story, but it isn't a success story only about me. It's a story about community and how when we work together, even if it doesn't always feel like it, we can create a change. <laughs>